Windows 11 is here and we've covered how to upgrade and some things you should do after installing it, but how do you personalize it? How do you really make it your own? That's what we're covering here in today's video. I'm Eplus Fox here to make tech easier and more fun and we've covered a gamut of topics on Windows 11 this week. A playlist link will be just linked below, but they're still kind of rolling out, so make sure you hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay informed. First and foremost, we'll just start out with the personalization menu by going to start, settings, and then personalization. Here you can change wallpapers or, you know, between the auto selected one colors or you can choose a specific image or if you have a folder of images you can actually choose multiple wallpapers for slideshow if you want a little bit more control over this there's a program on steam called wallpaper engine which allows you to use basically animated wallpapers which are really cool it uses up a little bit of graphics power but even on my editing and gaming rigs i haven't found it to be too offensive and is pretty cool gives you a nice little look if you happen to ever see your desktop moving on we can start talking about themes you can choose high contrast themes here if you desire which will mostly be kind of black and white super high contrast if you have visibility issues or you can start choosing colors and things like that by going back to personalization and choosing themes here you can choose whether you're in light or dark mode uh, however you prefer dark mode is actually pretty pleasant here in windows 11 so more so even than the newer re releases of windows 10 which is nice and you can choose transparency effects whether they're enabled or disabled this is a new thing that they're going back to after windows vista they're going back to it with windows 11 here for the arrow glass kind of transparency look but if you find it distracting you can actually disable it which is pretty nice Next, you can choose colors. You can choose an accent color to either be automatically selected based on the content of the app that you're using, or you can manually just assign specific colors and you get control over whether they show on the taskbar, the window borders, things like that, which is pretty nice. So you can either have just light or dark mode for your taskbar and your window buttons, but then colors elsewhere in the UI, or you can have colors everywhere, which I love. Colors are great. You can also change the lock screen. You can have it show pictures or the window spotlight where it just kind of shows you cool stuff and then you can expand to it from MSN searches or or whatever and then you can choose a singular app to display a status on your lock screen so you can have your calendar show up if you want to be able to see calendar things before you log in real quick or if you keep your computer locked all the time and just want that showing i specifically have weather pulled up but honestly i don't see the lock screen a whole lot other than when i log in so not a huge deal if you're using a touch device you can actually change the touch keyboard themes here some pretty cool themes i like it next up you get a lot of customization over the start menu which is really nice you can show you can choose whether to show recently added applications like old school start menus from windows xp days which is pretty neat you can choose whether it kind of stars and highlights most used applications to make your life a little bit easier and more speedy i love that you have direct control over this you can choose whether it shows recently opened files not only in the start menu but in the jump lists and in, in windows explorer as well again this is designed to speed you up but if you don't want it displaying that information or you find it to be a privacy concern you can disable it which i i just love that they're giving you this control here because whenever the or original windows 11 and kind of testing was done and things like that it didn't feel like they were really giving you control over these things so i love that you can also add specific folders and settings options to the start menu just like old school start menus it'll show up next to the power button so you can enable or disable folders for your user library folder the settings button and then specific other folders as well which is really nice it's more like the windows 10 start menu than you know windows 7 but it's still I think people who like and prefer the old school start menus from Windows 7 and 8.1 will find that this still gives you the same functionality. It just looks a little different. Next up, you can customize the taskbar. You can choose what buttons it shows with regards to the new features. So you can show or hide the search button, the task view or multiple virtual desktops button, as well as the widgets panel. And we'll talk about that more in an upcoming video as well. You can also change what it shows in the pinned icons for the system tray, which I think they're trying to rename to the taskbar corner overflow this just sounds more confusing than system tray but it's a little setting set of icons in the bottom right hand corner where you get a bunch of programs that are running you can choose which programs are pinned to always show and not be hidden under the little arrow this is useful if you have programs like discord or uh, slack that show you badges when you have unread messages or programs that you access a lot that you don't want to have to go through the extra extra click and finding it through the list of them or what have you so pretty handy that they still give you control over this regardless you can also, of course, choose whether the taskbar is centered or left aligned, which is nice for those of you who want to continue to use your muscle memory that you've built up over the past like 30 years of Windows. I'm glad they still give you that option. You can choose to auto hide the taskbar for that extra screen space, as well as whether to show it on your secondary displays as well if you have multiple monitors connected. Unfortunately, there is still no built in option for aligning the taskbar to the side or the top or anything like that. Hopefully they add that back in. 
Next up, there's actually a font manager. It's actually pretty nice, much upgraded compared to the old school like Windows Vista era font manager that they had before. And it gives you an option to find more fonts in the store, which is pretty nice. I think this is a nice upgrade, gives you previews of what your fonts look like. Like this is really cool. I would use it if you juggle fonts a lot for some reason. You can also customize whether you get relevant ads. And I think this affects the widget stock as well. You can just turn them all off, but then you're still you're you're gonna be getting recommendations at some point. They're just not gonna be catered towards you. So for example, they have specific gaming ones where it shows you upcoming game releases and things like that. It's kind of <laughs> a double-edged sword of like you can't disable them entirely, so you're choosing between getting catered towards your manually selected interest ads or just random ads. You're not getting no ads, which I guess is frustrating, but hey. You also get control over the widgets a little bit here as well. As I mentioned before, you can turn them off in the taskbar settings, but you also get to customize them a little bit. You get to choose what kind of content they display. You can remove specific widgets and things like that. We have a dedicated widgets video coming soon, so I'll, I'll leave most of that for that video. If you right click on your desktop, you can go to more options and then get the old right click menu, because dumb. Uh, but then here you can change things like your desktop icon size, whether they're aligned to a grid, whether they're shown at all, and things like that. So if you're looking for those options, it's behind the double layer of right-click menus when you right-click the desktop. <laughs> If you want to customize Windows Explorer, you can open up Explorer, go to the three dots icon, and then Options. And here, this is a clutch feature that I don't think enough people knew about with Windows 10 either. Uh, but if you go to these options, you can choose whether Windows Explorer automatically opens to the Quick View default. If you use a lot of like recently opened files, then that's useful for you. But I have it set to, and have for a long time, to just open up to my computer or this PC, which shows you your list of drives and everything, so that it saves you a click if that's what you usually go to anyway. Super helpful feature and then you can also change the usual options of showing or hiding file extensions, hidden files, uh, customize quick access options, whether it shows recent files and so on. You can also customize the navigation pane on the left, whether it shows your libraries, whether it shows all folders, whether it expands to the directory that you're in, things like that. A bunch of videos out like this for a specific, you know, launch like Windows 11 is a lot of work, and I can't publish them all on the same day, so you can actually watch them all at once, which I would like to do. But YouTube's notifications and algorithms and stuff don't really allow for that. That's why I've built my own video streaming site with my creator friends that allow me to not have to deal with a lot of that stuff. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with Curiosity Stream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, Thomas Frank, and Low Spec Gamer. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions and sometimes significantly earlier when I'm doing a bunch of videos at once like this. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to form an educational documentary power alliance where we worked out a deal with the link in the description below where if you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get access to their library of thousands of educational and documentary titles, but you also get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. They're also offering a 26% off their annual plan deal, making it less than $15 per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which is just kind of bonkers. While you're there, check out Secrets of the Brain to learn about how the brain works and to see a neuroscientist go and study a bunch of unique neurological conditions, which I found really informative and just kind of interesting. Like we, we focus on education and teaching a lot here, but learning how the brain works is kind of a big meta part of education as well. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and sign up for under $15 per year for both sites. It's crazy just do it. If you want to customize your cursor or your mouse pointer, that's under the accessibility settings in the settings menu. Here you can change the style to get like a dark theme or a green one, or you can also change the size to make it real big, which is useful for tutorials. For those of you who keep asking why I have a super large cursor sometimes, uh, things like that. Lastly, we're going to change some app settings. We're going to change default apps, the way apps behave, things like that. So first go to start settings, apps, apps and features. And here it gives you an option for Windows to let you know if an app you're installing or maybe using has a version of the app in the Windows Store. And this is super useful if you want to get easier updates. Like if you don't want to have to manually update your apps, if you switch to the Windows Store version, it will then automatically download updates for you through the normal Windows Store update process, which is pretty neat. And then you also have an option to uh, continue app experiences across all devices. This will help keep some of your logins and your settings in sync for specific apps across your computers, which is pretty cool. It'll just sync it up with your Microsoft account, which I kind of like. And then of course, go back to the apps section and choose default apps. And this will let you assign specific apps to file types and things like that. So we covered a lot of things here, but this was just a quick run through of the personalization options available to you in Windows 11. There's a lot you can do with it to make it really look and function your own. And this does 
doesn't include the multitasking capabilities with the new windows snapping and all of that which will also be covered in a future video so be sure to get subscribed for that hit the like button if you enjoyed join us on discord at discord.gg slash and remember be kind rewind <laughs>